Try your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that a mighty anointing, an irresistible anointing, a powerful anointing, a success-oriented anointing will come upon these hands in Jesus' name. Defeat is cancelled. Failure is cancelled. Lack is cancelled. Poverty is cancelled. Oh Lord, I pray that this day anointing will flow. Your power will catch everyone. No sickness in our midst. No depression in our midst. No brain problem in our midst. No demonization in our midst. No curse in our midst. Every yoke is broken in Jesus' name. Lord, I pour your anointing. I transfer your anointing upon all the young people who are here. And I pray that this day, from this day, victory will follow you. Success will follow you. Everything you touch will turn into a blessing in Jesus' name. Distinction. First class. Higher, higher, upper every time. Oh Lord, confirm it in Jesus' name. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Don't sit down yet. Don't worry, you in a hurry. Don't sit down yet. Tell the person by your side, I have the anointing for victory. Look at them. Say, I, I have anointing for victory. Look up at me here. Point at me here. And say, Pastor, Pastor you have anointing for victory and you can transfer your victory into my life it's done now you can sit down we're looking at isaiah chapter 10 isaiah chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 27 and it shall come to pass in that day this is the day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed by because of the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Because of the anointing that is mightily present, the victory has come to you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 57. It says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ, what he did for you. And because of his death on the cross of Calvary. And because he said, it is finished. All your problems are finished. All your heartaches are finished. And he says, Blessed be the Lord and thanks be unto the Lord that giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Anointing for victory. Number one, desirable anointing for an obedient youth. Desirable anointing for an obedient youth. I'm thinking of David in particular. His father sent him to go and keep the sheep in the field. He obeyed. His father sent him to go and visit his father on the battle, or to go and visit his brothers on the battlefield. He obeyed, and the Spirit of God said, look at that Goliath, take him on, and challenge him, and bring him down. And he obeyed, and even when, when Eliab would have said, what are you doing here? How can you come in here? He obeyed the Spirit of God. You see, when you obey, you obey the word of the Lord. You obey the word of the Savior. You obey the word of your King of kings and the Lord of lords anointing will follow in your life I'm looking at 4 Samuel chapter 16 4 Samuel chapter 16 and I'm reading from verse 1 4 Samuel chapter 16 verse 1 and the Lord said unto Samuel how long will thou mourn for Saul seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel God will not reject you 
he was rejected because of disobedience. Disobedience in a little matter there, a little matter, a little matter there. Little drops of water make a mighty ocean. This one does not matter. That one does not matter. That one does not matter. Little, little drops of water make a mighty ocean. And because of that disobedience, that's why he was rejected. That's why God said, I don't want to count with him anymore. I pray that God will count on you. I'm looking at that verse 1. It says, Feel thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Look at verse 9. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. Verse 11, and Samuel, and, and then it says, And Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, that's the obedient one, the youngest, that's the committed one, the youngest, that's the consecrated one, the youngest, that's the converted one. There remaineth the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep in obedience to my word, in obedience to my direction, in obedience to everything I've told him to do. He's keeping the sheep in the field. And then it says, And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in now. He was ruddy and withal of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Arise, anoint him, for this is he. There's somebody here qualified for anointing. I said, this is he. Where is he? This is he. Where is she? This is she. It's coming upon you in Jesus' name. They never met before. Samuel never met David before. In fact, he didn't even know him. This one passed by. That's not him. That one passed by. That's not him. And immediately he arrived. Immediately you arrive. The Lord will tell us that is a man. That is the lady, and the Lord will bring that anointing upon your life in Jesus' name. He said, this is he. Look at verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Raman. You see, many people, they put all the emphasis on the oil. They carry bottles of oil about. But you see, when the anointing came upon David, it wasn't the oil. It was the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is coming upon you. It'll fill your mind and fill your heart and fill your brain and fill your sight and saturate your personality. You'll be turned to another lady, another boy. In Jesus' name. This anointing that came upon him, why did this kind of anointing came? Number one, he converted youth. He converted youth. This man was converted. He was yielded to the Lord. Even though he was all alone by himself in the bush, in the forest, he never compromised the faith and never did anything that wasn't according to the word of God. In fact, he didn't know that anointing was taking place and somebody would have taken his place. Nobody will take your place. And then because he was a converted youth, over there when a lion came, he did destroyed the lion. A bear came, he destroyed the, he destroyed the bear. The father was not there. If he had said, oh, that's a little lamb, it's a little thing. I'm not going to allow this to bother my life. I'm going to just uh, release the sheep to the animal and release the sheep to the bear. No, he wouldn't do that. He converted use number two. It's, it, was, it was a compassionate use. Look at somebody that even a little lamb so compassionate, so concerned. He will not allow the bear to take that away. will allow the lamb to take that away. That's why the anointing came. If in your life, then you say, Lord, this conversion we're talking about and this salvation they're talking about, I'm going to make sure it's intact. 
impact in my life and then i'm going to be compassionate you'll not even kill a fly you're not even kill a, li a little one and you're not going to destroy the character of another person number three it confirmed youth it confirmed youth. you see it is a sign it is a wonder it is a miracle that brought the confirmation upon david's life and then number four is the confidence you this young man was confident and even a lion will not run him away from doing the will of god a bear will not run him away from doing the will of god and goliath will not uh, will not turn him away and when he looked that dog when I said I'm confident the same God that helped me against that lion and the same God that helped me against that bear is going to help me against this uncircumcised Philistine confidence confidence because of the name of the Lord I come to you in the name of the Lord confidence because of the promises of the Lord the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures and then he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake even though I even though I pass through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou Emmanuel it, you are with me and then saith thy rod and thy staff they comfort me him he even prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies and he anointed my head I said he anointed my head I said he anointed my head and my cup runneth over the time of running over has come the time of extraordinary has come. The excellent oil and the excellent power of God will run over your life in Jesus' name. And surely now goodness and mercy. That man was confident. He was confident goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And look at me, I. Say I. I. Say I. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Next time when we have this meeting, you'll find me here. Yeah. Will I find you there? Yeah. I said, will I find you there? Yeah. Next time when we're having this meeting, nobody will take your place because yeah. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Tell me. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and and ever. He was a confident youth. Not only that, and number five was a courageous youth. Tell me, a person like this that will say, when even when Saul was shivering, I was, you know, was quaking. It is made this young man said, don't worry about him. I come to him in the name of the Lord. He was number six, consecrated, consecrated. And then number seven, he was commendable, commendable. And if in your life, you just make up your mind converted, you make up your mind compassionate, you make up your mind confirmed. You make up your mind confident. You make up your mind courageous. You make up your mind consecrated. You make up your mind commendable. This anointing will come upon you. Point number two now, definite anointing for an occupied youth. Definite anointing for an occupied youth. You see, I'm talking about another youth now. This was not somebody that is, you know, just so, so child, an indolent child, an uncommitted child, a child that has nothing, doing, just loafing around, just wandering around, occupied, occupied, occupied till I come, occupied, be doing something when the Lord comes and then... When this anointing comes, let that anointing find you doing something. And this is for an occupied youth. I'm looking at First Kings, First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19, and I'm reading here from verse 16. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. And we're looking at here from verse 16. Here the Lord was talking to Elijah and Jehu the son of Nimshai. Shall thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha the son of Shephard of Abel Mehola, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room? You know, somebody will take the place of all these champions ahead of us. When after David left, somebody took the place of David. After Moses left, somebody took the place of Moses. After Paul, the apostle left, somebody took the place of Paul, the apostle. And when John Wesley left, somebody should have taken the place of John Wesley. And for Martin Luther, somebody should have taken the place of Martin Luther. And when we leave, when we go on vacation, somebody there is going to take our place. 
Somebody there is going to take her place. And the person there, where is the person I'm looking for? Where is the person I'm looking for? God will help you. God, you will stay there. You know, the runaway people never take the place of champions. The runaway people never take the place of heroes. But if you're going to take the place of a hero, you are following that hero. You are looking at that hero. You are attached to, to that hero. You are kind of affiliated with that hero. You are associated with that hero. Anytime that hero is preaching, I'm there. Anytime that hero is uh, doing something and is passing on that anointing, as I'm getting there, I'm get, I said, let it rub on me. Let it rub on me. That thing will rub on you. The courage of a hero. The confidence of a hero. The conviction of a, of a hero. It will come upon you in Jesus' name. And so God told Elijah, he said, there is a man, you have never met him. There's somebody that maybe I've never met you. Maybe we've never sat together like this, face to face. And I say, what's your name? And which school do you go? And you are the person the Lord is bringing anointing upon this day. It will happen in Jesus' name. And then it goes on to say, uh, look at it now from that uh, chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 20, chapter 19. We're looking at verse 20. Uh, it says, and he left the oxen. Uh, let's go to verse 19. And so he departed thence and found Elisha. We will find you. I said, I will find you. And the son, the son of Shepherd, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen. I told you he was occupied. An occupied man, not lazy. Not indolent, not loafing about. He said, with 12 yoke of oxen before him, and he with the 12, and Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. And they were told, and he left the oxen, and he ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then. I will follow thee. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done unto thee? And he returned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people. And he did. And then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. He began, I will begin. I said, I will begin. And then you can, you can tell about this Elisha, about this Elisha, because later, when the real anointing was to come, in this case now, that's what I told you before. There's no oil here. There's no pouring of anything. The anointing is of the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Uh, we're looking at Second, Second Kings, Second Kings chapter 2. Second Kings chapter 2. Here is a time, here is a time when the anointing really came. Verse 9, and it came to pass when they were gone over. That Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. I'm waiting for my anointing. I said, I'm waiting for my anointing. Anybody waiting there? Anybody waiting there? It's coming in Jesus' name. The time came, the time came. If you're looking for a bottle of oil, you miss it. If you're looking for an honor of oil, you miss it. Uh, but, you know, there was no oil, there was nothing here. And then Elijah said unto Elisha, ask me what I will do for you before I be taken away from you. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of the Spirit come be upon me. And it happened. I said it happened. And it's going to happen. I said it's going to happen. Uh, what do we learn about this uh, young man, Elisha? Number one, unashamed, unashamed, unashamed. You see somebody who has been plying with 12 yoke of oxen that is going to abandon everything and is going to be following uh, Elisha, Elijah. And then the people, the colleagues are saying, well, what happened to you? You are following just a prophet of God. You are following just a preacher. And then you are going there every time, going there every time. What are you doing? I'm just ministering to him. I'm pouring water on his You are full people. People. Don't you know who you are? But he said, I don't care for that. I'm running after the anointing. And I'm after the anointing. And that anointing is going to come, number one, on a ship. Number two, undefiled. Undefiled. You see, he didn't defile himself with all the other people. They never do wells. 
He didn't allow the influence to be upon him. He was undefiled. Number three, unwavering. Unwavering. I'm going to Jericho. We'll get there together. I'm going to Gilgal. We'll go there together. The Lord has sent me to Jordan. We'll go there together. You see, that is the spirit of a person that is going to have the anointing unwavering. Number four is uncompromising. Uncompromising. Do you know the Lord is going to take your mouth out of your head today? Hold your peace. Shut up. I don't want to discuss now. This is not the age for compromise. It's not the age for, you know, dilly darling. It's not the age for, you know, uh, okay, 50 50. I'm going to give up a little of my conviction, and you give up a little of your conviction. No, he was uncompromising. Number five, unquenchable. It is mad at unquenchable thirst unquenchable desire the, first, the very first day he met elijah there was this desire within him i want to have this power i want to have this anointing i want to have this fire within me i want to have this authority that anointing he wanted it by all means and then were all the all through the days and the weeks and the months and the years that desire was unquenchable if you are looking for something you'll get it ask i shall be given unto you Seek and you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. He that knocketh findeth. And he that seeketh to him, he shall, he shall find it. For which of you having any child, the Lord told the parents that will ask a fish, will you give me him? Uh, will you give him a scorpion? Uh, if you ask an egg, will you give him a stone? If you been evil not to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give you all the good things you are asking for? And what I'm asking for is anointing. I'm asking for anointing for you. I said, I'm asking for you. I said, I'm asking for you. Are you going to have in Jesus' name? Number six, it was uncorruptible. Uncorruptible, you couldn't corrupt this man. You couldn't defile this man. You couldn't make this man dirty in his thoughts, in his mind. You see, the candidates for anointing, they don't, they don't stay around people who are corrupt, who are evil, who are defiled, those who have gone astray, those who are backsliding. They stay with the people that are on the upper land, upper ground. And then, number seven, unstoppable. Unstoppable. Show me a man that what he said yesterday is what he's still saying today. Day, the direction he was facing yesterday is the direction he's still facing today and the desire and the passion and the goal and the destiny he had in mind yesterday is what the destiny and the, and the goal he still has today the dream he had in years gone by that's the same dream he still has today and this man and this lady they are unstoppable I'm telling you that such people and nothing will come upon them do I have such people here unstoppable 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 nothing will stop you in jesus name now point number three davidic anointing for a holy youth davidic anointing davidic anointing for a holy youth you see when you make up your mind like david a lion comes lion is not going to scare me away and then the bear came. The bear is not going to scare me away. Temptations come. Temptation is not going to put my back on the wall. What, where I'm going is where I'm going. What I'm doing is what I'm going to keep on doing. When you make up your mind, the, the kind of anointing that came upon David will come upon you in Jesus' name. And when any adult, any soul has evil spirit tormenting them, you put your hand on that harp. And while you are playing that music, singing that song, all those people that are demonized, they're going to be delivered in Jesus' name. And when any problem is there, when you show up, when you come there, even as a youth, because the time has come now, it used to be those of us who are pastors and leaders and uh, GS that used to lay hands on the sick and then they recover. The time has now come. I pass that anointing to you. <laughs> that now you lay your hands on the sick and what's going to happen to them? They're going to recover. And if you don't know anything to do, anything to do, uh, you know, somebody has an evil spirit and they say, what are we going to do? If you don't know what to do, just begin like David and begin to sing. There's no mountain the Lord cannot remove. And when you begin to sing, all those mountains of demons, they're going to go away in Jesus' name. When we come to our camp, and then if anybody is sick there in the hostel or anywhere, or maybe when we're going to, if somebody is vomiting, what's happening to you? I don't know what's happening to me. Maybe I so you say in the name of Jesus, and that thing will vanish away in Jesus' name. Miracles. 
miracles, signs and wonders among the youth everywhere. Miracle power is flowing everywhere in Jesus' name. The kind of anointing of David, Davidic anointing upon a holy youth. Let me show you. If I'm looking for David, I just go to the Psalms. I'm looking for David, I just go to the Psalms. I'm looking at some two, some two. I'm reading here from verse one. From verse one, why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves. The rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against this anointed, against this anointed sin. Let us, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their, their cause from, from us. He that seated in the heavens will, shall love. The Lord shall have them in derision. And then shall you speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. That is, you are now going to be anointed today and when anybody opens this month and it speaks against you or says I'm going to lay curse upon you, the Lord will laugh at them. And then you'll speak against them in great trust and great derision. I'm looking at Psalm 18, Psalm 18, and I'm looking at verse 50 here. Great deliverances giveth he to his king and showeth mercy to his anointed. You are anointed, the mercy of the Lord will never stop in your life in Jesus' name. In Psalm 20, I'm reading from verse 4. Great, it grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. When the anointing comes upon you, you pray like this, God will answer that prayer. You have a desire, the Lord will fulfill that desire. We will we'll rejoice in thy salvation. And then it goes on to say, in, thy na in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now I know, now know I, that the Lord saveth is anointed. The Lord saveth is anointed. It he will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. That's why the anointing is coming upon you and because something great, something great, something wonderful will come upon you today in Jesus' name. Psalm 28 verse 8. Psalm 28 verse 8. The Lord is their strength. He is the saving strength of his anointed. When the anointing comes upon you, the saving strength, the saving energy, the saving power, the saving authority of that anointing comes upon your life. I'm looking at Psalm 105. Psalm 105. We're looking at verse 15. Psalm 105. We're looking at Psalm 15. It tells us in verse 15, Psalm 105. This is for the anointed. When the anointing comes upon you, what a great victory you have and what a great success you have. What a great dominion you have. In Psalm 105, verse 15, saying, touch not mine anointed, nor do my blow my prophets no harm. After this anointing comes upon you today, nobody will be able to do your harm. Every tongue that is open against you, you will condemn in Jesus' name. Because when the anointing comes, there's no harm, there's no hurt, there's no cause, there's no yoke that can come upon your life anymore. I'm looking at Psalm 132, Psalm 132, Psalm 132. And there, I'm reading from verse 17 and verse 18. Psalm 132. We're looking at verse 17, verse 18. There will I make the horn of David to bud. I have ordained a lamp for mine anointed. The Lord has, an, has ordained light for you, success for you, victory for you, revelation for you. And it will come in Jesus' name. In fact, I wake up in the morning, and as I wake up, in the, I have my quiet time, my devotion, and then after my devotion, after I've done everything I've read, and I've believed, I've meditated on the word, I've prayed, then to finalize everything, I say, the Lord today is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures today. He leadeth me in the, in the, beside the still waters today. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm in the bus, I'm in the train, I'm in a taxi, I'm in a car, I'm on the street, I'm walking. Even though I'm passing through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. And then it says, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me hey hey look at this and thou and thou and thou tell me thou preparest a table for me in the presence of mine enemies and tell me what follows now my cup is running over and surely 
goodness and mercy and surely healing and health and surely dominion and deliverance and surely prosperity and success and surely victory and overcoming shall follow me, shall follow me, shall follow me. That means I keep on moving and say, goodness and mercy, come on now, catch up here. And then I keep on going. I say, victory, where are you? Come on, I'm not waiting for you. I'm in a hurry. I'm going here, I'm going here. And victory is following after me all the days of my life. And then I'm not going to stop until I will dwell in the house of the Lord Stand up and tell the, stand up and tell the Lord, I, I, I will dwell, I will dwell, I will dwell, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. This is your day, the day of your anointing. This is your day, day of your power. This is your day, the day of your authority. You tell the Lord, you tell the Lord and say, Lord, it's my day, it's my day, it's my day. And the Lord is going to fulfill it in your life. It's going to fulfill your life. The Lord is your shepherd, you will not lack. The Lord is your shepherd. He maketh you to lie down in green pasture. The Lord is your shepherd. And then he leadeth you by, you say, in the, by the still waters. The Lord is your shepherd. He leadeth you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. The Lord is your shepherd. And then because of that, do you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You will fear no evil. The Lord is your shepherd. His rod and his staff will comfort you. The Lord is your shepherd. He prepares a table before you. In the presence of your enemies, the Lord is your shepherd, and because of that, your cup will run over. The Lord is your shepherd, goodness and mercy, victory and dominion will follow you all the days of your life. The Lord is your shepherd, because of that, you are going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's right there. The anointing of the Lord, the power of the Lord upon your life. You are the lucky one, you are the fortunate one, you are the blessed one, you are the anointed one. On. That anointing is coming right now. That anointing, that anointing, that anointing is coming right now. And say, Lord, I accept. Lord, I believe. The anointing that gives victory. The anointing that gives authority. The anointing that gives power. The anointing that breaks every yoke. The anointing that heals the sick. The anointing, the anointing. Yes, it's coming. Yes, it's coming. Why don't you tell the Lord, oh Lord, here am I. Oh Lord, here am I. It's mine. It's mine. I'm the candidate for that anointing. Failure is forgotten. Defeat is forgotten. Sickness is forgotten. All the harassment of the devil is forgotten. All the power of evil is broken. All that yoke is broken. And the cause is taken away because of the anointing that breaks the yoke that comes upon my life, the anointing that goes on and on and on till the very end of your life because as your days are so will your strength be. The anointing, the anointing, the anointing, the anointing that brings conversion, the anointing that brings consecration, the anointing that brings conviction, the anointing that makes you more than a conqueror, that anointing comes upon your life. I receive, I believe, I accept, I receive, I believe, I accept. It's done, it's done, it's done, it's done. Failure cancelled, it's done. Sickness taken away, it's done. All the harassment of the devil taken away, it is done. Your yoke is broken, it is done. The curse is taken away, it is done. It is done, it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Victorious youth, in Jesus' name we pray. Raise up those hands. Right hand, left hand, doesn't matter. The one, you, the one you're right with. And with those fingers, one, two, three, four, five. Faith and grace. Goodness and mercy. Amen. Success and victory. Amen. This hand that we are raising up today will never experience failure again. Amen. This hand you are raising up today will never experience curse, yoke, bondage again in Jesus name every time there is a good thing to do this hand will come alive every time there's an exam to write this hand will come alive and every for every spirit of forgetfulness the Lord will drive away in Jesus name your hands anointed your brain anointed your mind anointed your spirit anointed your papers anointed, your knowledge anointed, your eyes anointed, 
your ears anointed, your personality anointed, the courage of the conqueror will come into you. The confidence of the conqueror will come into you. You will not fail. You will not fall. You will succeed. You will succeed. You will succeed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you this morning on behalf of every child, every boy, every girl here. Oh Lord, the anointing that cancels failure, pass on to them in Jesus' name. The anointing that breaks every yoke, oh Lord, pass on to them in Jesus' name. The anointing that brings healing, anointing that brings deliverance, anointing that brings confidence, anointing that brings authority, anointing that brings power, pass on to them in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray the anointing for success, the anointing for passing exam, the anointing for retentive memory, the anointing for being upper and upper and higher and higher, pass on to them in Jesus' name. The anointing that will walk through the holes of enemies and nothing will touch them. The anointing that will make them to have protection power from heaven that nobody will touch the anointed of the Lord. Pass on to them in Jesus' name. From, from this day, confidence in your heart. Courage in your spirit. Strength in your bows. Victory in your hand. And goodness and mercy will now run after you. Goodness and mercy will not follow after you. Today, at school, in college, university, polytechnic, at home, on the bus, in the plane, as you go overseas, as you get the job, goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And when the saints go marching in to get to heaven, you will be there. Lord, I pray all the blessings we have taught about today, all the blessings the children, your children, that they have claimed today, give unto them in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be delivered. You are set free. Go from victory unto victory. From deliverance unto dominion. And enjoy the blessing of the Lord for the rest of your life. Lord, we thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. And everybody said, and everybody said, and everybody said, You know what? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Every step you take from today, amen, amen. victory, amen, amen. amen. success, amen, amen. amen. dominion, amen, amen. amen. deliverance, amen. Amen. amen, dominion, as you go, amen, amen. amen. and victory. Amen. The rest of your life, 